Ni hao. Hello everyone. My name is Zhu Khan. I am a Siberian Chinese. I came to study. I'm in the Caucasus now. To be more precise, I am in Ingushetia. Russia by Foreigners is the only travel show that destroys age-old stereotypes. Ten foreign students, ten regions, and three days to find a common language with the largest country in the world. And one golden rule to become a Highlander. Welcome to Ingushetia. As they say, let's go! I first heard about Caucasus when I was still in school. I really loved geography in high school. Of course, I dreamed of visiting the Caucasus. I discovered different cultures when I came to Russia because you have a very rich culture. Firstly, I was impressed by the Caucasus cuisine. Look, press down with your finger. You should add flour. Oh, too much. Never mind, there is never much flour. I think it's not easy. It's easy! Look, take the flour with your fingers, press down and twist. That's it. You can do it like this if it's easier for you. Look, like that, on the palm of your hand. You probably see that I did it because the shape is completely different. Do you promise you'll eat a lot today? And what is a lot? The dough should be either so soft or a little thicker, but we have coarse flour so the dough won't be thick. We moisten it and roll a circle like this on the palm, then a semi-oval. Ah, I have the same shape as… Why do we use corn flour? Because it is less heavy and more healthy. You get more carbohydrates, but you don't burden your body. We usually make bread of such flour. We steam it. Yes, I've heard of it. It's the same thing, but we cook in boiling water. Dulk is meat. Berk is sauce. Kaltam are dumplings that you are going to make. Dalka, katlam, berk. These are corn dumplings. They are instead of bread in the main traditional dish, dalk kaltam. Sometimes they are made of wheat flour, but they are more healthy for us when they are made of corn flour. Well, it was hard food for men since ancient times. They were not hungry for a long time after eating them. It consists of... It seems this dumpling is a success. We make a hole in the flour and put the egg here. Homemade eggs are more desirable for good bonding. We knead the dough, adding flour and boiling water. We put them in boiling water. They cook for about 20 minutes or half an hour, so that they are definitely cooked. Oh, two hours? No, half an hour or 20 minutes. You say that all these national dishes, since my childhood, since your childhood, well, now my girl is running around here, watching and memorizing. Did you cook it yourself for the first time when you were studying at university? No. I started cooking at home, but I had to cook regularly when I was at university. I had a brother who studied with me. I had to cook regularly. I finally began to learn to cook properly there. Before that, my mother sometimes said, cook something to eat when she came home tired, and I was cooking. This duty finally became mine when I went to study at the university, and it probably will be for the rest of my life. I never cooked when I lived in my country, and I started to miss home-cooked food after coming abroad. 
Yes, we had the same thing. We couldn't eat restaurant food regularly for a long time. Together we cooked dishes of national cuisine in our family. It was a variety of tortillas, delicious vegetables and meat, of course. It was awesome. Do it carefully as to not to break them. The pan should be red hot, it is important. Align the shape if required. Industrial injuries are provided. Done. It will be square soon. You love it, and it loves you too. You will succeed. You should beat this dough. Be gentle with it. Oh, sorry. Let's pat it. Don't be afraid. Take the dough like this. Gorgeous, gorgeous, well done. Usually, we have the right side when guests are sitting. I invite you to sit down at the table. What do you wish to taste? What should I put for you? Let me take care of you. Thank you. Can I? It's such a tradition. Taste both wheat flour and corn flour, okay? So, this is your plate. Thanks. Bon appetit! Bon appetit! I'm going to do as you did. It's important to respect old people, and we will also be respected when we get older. You say that respect for your elders is very much appreciated in your families, right? But in fact, we also really appreciate it. For example, our young people also don't eat if the older generations don't eat. That's why I did it for you. Thanks. We don't do that, but you did it for me, so I take it. A little bit. Thanks. To your health. Thanks. I never thought that one day I would visit Nazran myself. This town is small, but very cozy. I think the English are great fellows. It was interesting to discover the ancient people lived inside the tower, and there are also battle towers. They are different. It was interesting. Look, this is our ethnographic museum. You can learn about the everyday life of the English here. The battle tower is opposite you. The female part of the habitable tower is located on the right, and this is the male part. It was a whole habitable tower, but it was divided to show the rooms inside. Here, let's go to the kitchen first. I'm going to tell you about the kitchen utensils. Oklich is a shared plate. It is also called 
It is also called shu in English. There are no personal plates. Dumplings and meat were placed around the plate and broth was poured into the center. These are different sieves. These bowls are for melted butter, milk, water. This is a measuring bowl for flour and this is a churn. You might have noticed these chairs and tables and stools too. They were on three legs. It was a tradition to make them exactly on three and not four legs before. As I said, we have a habitable tower. The cattle were always on the ground floor to give off heat. Look, this is already a female room. Women were engaged in needlework here. The spinning wheels are located in the corners. Women sewed and knitted here. They made carpets and clothes and put them here. There is a spinning wheel on this side. On the left side, look, the yarn is rougher when it was used. Therefore, bags were made from it. Carpets were made with the help of such spinning wheel. And with the help of this spinning wheel, they sewed coarse bags. Maybe you know this. This bed is for... This is a cradle. Yes, it's a cradle. This is a cradle. The baby was usually wrapped up. They usually put the baby here. These were arms, these were legs. And look, like this. So the baby was wrapped up. The baby was lying here. There were hands and there were legs. The baby was wrapped tightly. And that's how the rope was tied. That's it. Yes, a cradle without sides. You can swing it with your feet or with your hands like this. This is our blacksmith shop. It's an anvil on this side. These are bellows for regulating the temperature of the fire. It's possible to split steel at a temperature of at least 1,200 or 1,300 degrees. They specifically regulated the temperature. There were few blacksmiths, so they were in great demand. Even blood feud didn't apply to the blacksmiths. This is chainmail. It's tougher on this side and softer on this side. This is the oldest item in our museum. The ground floor of the battle tower I was talking about is located on this side. This is an isolated entrance. It's not from the ground floor. It's not the main entrance. They kept provisions and prisoners, if there were any, in this room. This is the master bedroom. The decor was usually modest. There was always a pot or, for example, another water jug if needed. There was a bed and there were carpets on the walls. This is the ladder I wanted to show you. This is the old ladder. This is the ladder that was used before, not this one. It used to be located in the corners and there was such a passage. A person would climb the stairs and close the door, leaving a small hole to say something or pass something if needed or pass something if necessary. As I said, they left weapons and provisions here on purpose. They kept their weapons on the stone and on the roofs just in case to be ready. The air is very fresh, especially in the morning here. I want to inhale and inhale when I wake up, because the air is very good.
Khan. This gorge is called Ozdi Choch. Choch is a gorge in Ingush, and Ozdi, the Ozdoyev family, lived here. This is one of the big Ingush families. Such a large tape of the Ozdivs lived in this gorge. They have about 28 tower complexes here. Rather, they have to do with them. You can only see the central part now. This citadel is called Vovnushki in Ingush. Vov is a battle tower in Ingush. These towers were connected by a wicker bridge. It was quite a busy spot in the Middle Ages. One of the branches of the Silk Road passed through this gorge. The caravans went further east towards Derbent from here. And why are there small and very high towers? There are habitable and battle towers. These high towers are battle. They are called Vov. Habitable buildings are called Gal. The name of the Ingush comes from this word. Galgai is an inhabitant of the tower. Inhabitant, inhabitant of, the tower. of the tower, yes. Habitable towers were built close to the battle towers in direct visibility of each other. Inhabitants could move to the battle tower at the moment of danger and defend themselves until help arrived. We can only see one battle tower now, but there are more than 2,000 such architectural monuments registered on the territory of mountainous Ingushetia. Therefore, this territory is usually called the land of towers and legends. That's what they say about Ingushetia. Such battle towers have been everywhere since the 14th century. The construction boom started then. The towers were built up to the 18th century here. Oh, these towers were built right on the rocks. We know that building a house is difficult, but they built such high towers. It's like the Great Wall of China. It's just a miracle. We are in the center of the Targim Basin. Such a unique object as Tkhaba Yerdi Church is located here. This place is very revered among the Ingush. The state court, called Mech Kel, was held here in the old days. The most important and topical issues concerning the entire region, the whole of Ingushetia, were discussed here. The church was divided into three main parts for the three main Ingush societies. Each society disposed of its part. Wise men solved important and topical issues there. Clergymen and sages constantly lived at this church. People came to them to arbitrate issues even from Georgia and other neighboring regions. They wanted to know the opinion of the wise men of Tchava Yerdi. They took it as a basis, the judgments that the wise men made. The church is dated to the 7th century AD by historians. But if you look closely at the fence, you can see it is more ancient. According to many historians, there was an older pagan sanctuary here before the construction of Tchaba Yerdi Church. This fence with larger solid stone boulders confirms this version. According to entomology, Tchaba Yerdi literally means our faith. And I must say that there were times when life was very harsh and it was hard to live in such conditions despite all the beauty around. All people were actually very similar. Despite the fact that I am from China, we are all the same as Russians. What we need is to live sincerely, peacefully, and with dignity in this world. We've just come to the village of Egikal. Egikal is the administrative center of medieval Ingushetia. This is the most populous locality of that time. The earliest buildings date back to the second millennium BC here. People had lived here until 1944. 
People still live in some huts. There's a little bit in the distance. Does one family live in a single tower? You could say that. Can you see the ruins nearby? It was all a kind of citadel. These are battle towers. These are ruins. Little has been preserved. This tower was both battle and habitable. It was four stories high. The first such towers were built around the 10th century. The battle towers that we can see in the distance were built in the 14th century or later. Writer Idris Bazorkin is the most famous local person. He was buried here. It's his homeland. He was born in this village. The cemetery was usually located next to the village. The sunny burial is in front of us, on the right side. It is called Makhla Kashamash in English. It looks like a battle tower, which is much smaller in size. It only took one year to build such a tower. They reach a height of up to 30 meters. All the base of their wall is 5 meters long, and the higher, the shorter it is. The height is up to 30 meters. It took one year to build such a tower. Exactly. Exactly a year was given, neither one day more or less. People were so superstitious that they believed in trouble if the builder could not build such a tower within a year. Some people even left the towers unfinished. The builder was paid with 60 head of cattle for the construction of such a tower. The builder was a very revered profession. It's not just an ordinary worker. Such people were in great demand, of course. It was raining when I arrived. According to our culture, it means that a guest can stay here forever. It probably means that Caucasus welcomes me and wants me to stay here. Can I stay in Caucasus? We are at the Armchi Resort. It is 1,250 meters above sea level. This is the height of the tower station we departed and we are going to be at around 1,550 meters above sea level. We're going up now. The resort was founded in 1926, so it's over 90 years old. It is located in the center of a pine forest and people usually come here in May. The pine blooms and secretes specific resins in May and June. It is healthy in the case of respiratory diseases. It's very good for patients. So there is such a boom here during this period. It's the high season in May and June. We can see no less beautiful nature now in autumn, but we can enjoy it in quiet. This cable car is 800 meters long. It leads to the starting point of the ski trail. We've walked along the tourist route to the Lyazgi waterfall. The length of the route is just over one and a half kilometers. 
It is also called the Liazgi Mile in another way. For the first time, it was mentioned as a tourist route back in 1929. This route has been known since then. It was slightly upgraded recently. The handrails appeared here. The route can be overcome even by untrained people, elderly and young people. Children can take this route. It is very interesting. It is also considered an ecological route. The waterfall is two-stage with a height of up to 20 meters. And where does it flow? And this water flows further into the Armchi River that we saw. This river flows into the Terek River, which flows into the Caspian Sea. So we could get to the Caspian Sea on a raft. I would really like to invite my English friends and all of you to come to my homeland to discover another culture.